Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Authentic Sounds. My name is Wim Winters and today I want to start a new series of vlogs in which I will share with you some of the books that I own and that are of great value and to me and I, of which I think that I have had a, a big influence on my approach to the music I play and of which I think of course uh, that it would be interesting to share them with you. Uh, maybe in the future also articles, internet articles or uh, things I come across uh, and I want, I would like to share with you. Um, it can be very short episodes, it can be longer. I must say I, I'm trying to keep them short within 10-15 minutes but it's not always so simple. For today, however, I for a long time, uh, I was thinking about starting this new series with the book, the diaries. I must say diaries. I've taken more volumes of Ignaz Moscheles. And for those of you who are not familiar with uh, this important musician, Moscheles was a famous pianist. Uh, born end of the 18th century, I mean, I, I believe 1794 in Prague, and he died uh, in 18, around 1870. So he died at the age of 76, and actually lived in a quite interesting time. Uh, Moscheles as a musician, I come back to that, uh, on, on the relationship between Moscheles and his time, but Moscheles as a musician, um, is you can hardly overestimate his position and importance in the 19th century. He was actually um, yeah, the first one with an international uh, career as a piano virtuoso. Even before Liszt and before Clara Schumann and, and before Thalberg, he was a generation earlier. He played with his Erard Grand Piano across all Europe, from southern Spain to northern Sweden and Norway. And during his lifetime, he met, of course, due to his position as, as a musician and, 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 and leader of, of, of several uh, uh, um, yeah, music festivals, he was very close to very, very famous musicians like Beethoven, um, uh, later on Mendelssohn. He was a very good friend, actually the best friend of Felix Mendelssohn. Um, his son Felix Moscheles was named after Felix Mendelssohn, uh, which he um, got to know when Felix Mendelssohn only was 15 year old, years old. So he almost all his, his, his artistic career, Moscheles was there. He uh, knew Clementi very well in, at his old day, in his old days. Um, uh, Chopin, Liszt, uh, Meyerbeer, uh, and it continues, Schumann's. Uh, Moscheles was in the center of what you can call music life in the 19th century. Liszt even called him one of the pillars of piano playing and he was very fond of that because he admired Franz Liszt. But um, during all the, these, this time, and, and in, in, I think from 1814 on, he, Moscheles wrote, kept a diary. And you can not believe the detail with which he describes certain events. And for me, I got to know Moscheles <laughs> his book um, when I was in Amsterdam at the, at the conservatory and I was a regular visitor of the Slechter, which is a second-hand bookshop. And there I found this uh, publication of Emil Smittak. It's, it's in English, it's Moscheles, the life of the composer and his encounters with Beethoven, Liszt, Chopin and Mendelssohn and others, but of course that's the title of this book. Um, it is a brilliant summary of 
the same thing that you can read extensively as been published by Moshele's widow, Charlotte Moshele's, and his son, Felix Moshele's. So these two volumes are, I think, um, the giving the most complete picture of the diaries of Moshele's. I even don't know if the complete diaries ever uh, were published. But anyway, the most important facts and every fact that has to do something with uh, with another composer, um, you will find it in these two volumes that you can still buy. You have to just to check online. I will um, put some notes in the in the links below, and I believe also that you can uh, even uh, um, read them online for free uh, as a scanned version of an of a library um, I will I will I will look it up and put links in 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 below in the show notes so um, but anyway if you find this book secondhand on the internet do not hesitate and and buy it and read it and you will be amazed of what you can find in there in my opinion I will read some 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 excerpts uh, in, a, in, a, in a minute for me it's this kind of uh, primary sources, uh, letters, uh, diaries, um, all kind of, of information is essential if you want to develop uh, your personal idea about a, an approach to the historical evidence. It's, it's, and I say it, um, I'm very aware of this, this what, I, what I say, that it is an approach you have to create your own, I would say, three-dimensional context, which is so important. Even even a detailed manuscript as this only gives you a, 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 a two-dimensional uh, section of time. Uh, what people wrote 200 years ago, yeah, they used about the same words as we do today, but forget the fact that you can understand them in the way we do. You really need to reconstruct your own context. And I call it a three-dimensional context because um, once you see connections between sources, and we will talk about that in future episodes uh, for sure, um, first we must make a row of this kind of books. But once you, make, you start to make connections, it's the there comes a new kind of reality and it's from that reality and it's not a reality it's it's what you make of of the historical reality but you can the more you read these prime resources the the the, the, the clearer it becomes and um, and for my feeling it is essential even if you do not hear Moshele's playing He's talking about this way of approaching uh, music of Beethoven and Mozart, but you don't hear it. But even then, you can try to understand the background from which he writes what he, what he wrote. And that's important. And we will come back to that, but it's just a, a, a general point that I wanted to make. So, this book reads really as a story and actually things that this Mr. Schmittak leaves out of the complete edition he makes brilliant summaries so uh, it, it's really it's, it's, it's wonderful um, I'll just read one one since we have time I hope it's so interesting here Moshe is in Vienna where he met Beethoven he knew very, Beethoven very much uh, we come back to that in a minute but he went to Salieri at the end of his life, um, being very ill in this in in his kind of hospital. I, he, was, he was there and he wrote about it this. Seeing him again, and I quote, seeing him again was a sad affair. And his appearance alone horrified me. 
and in this jointed sentences he spoke of his imminent death and he added these words this being my last illness i can give you my word of honor that there is no truth in the absurd rumor you know mozart it was said that i had poisoned him but it's not true tell the world dear marshalis that it's nothing but a malicious rumor old salieri told you on this on his deathbed i was deeply shaken and when the old man thanked me yet again for visiting him with tears in his eyes having overwhelmed me with his gratitude when i arrived i knew it was time for me to hurry away before i was overcome with grief in his presence concerning the rumor to which the dying man had alluded i know that it had been circulating but it had never concerned me in a moral sense he had certainly hurt mozart by intriguing against him and had doubtless poisoned many an hour for him so Moschlis is visiting Salieri and here we have two very important uh, quotes uh, that Salieri was the one who would have poisoned Mozart and uh, the, the remark of Moschlis that he had poisoned a lot of hour, hour for Mozart that's something else of course for those of you who have seen the film Amadeus um, and for those of you who haven't seen the film you should not it's a very beautiful film but it has no, it's really nothing to do with mozart but in that film they they take these kind of quotes and and and, and misquote them uh, so that uh, that that's that salieri uh, you, you remember the, the 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 passage with salieri it's it's based on this on this uh, this quote but what moshless writes about uh, doubtless poisoned many of an hour of him it's it's also not taken f literally and i'll come back to that later but salieri was of course a commercial opponent of mozart being the one of the two biggest opera composers in vienna so uh, there is another context to that it's again you, you should not take it f literally but you have to keep it in mind that moshless at that time wrote this about salieri what is the evidence what is the truth it says much about moshless it says much about the time in which he visits salieri but it doesn't necessarily say something about uh, the facts of it really was in the time of mozart that salieri poisoned many an hour of him that is another evidence which you can only reconstruct by reading original sources from the time of mozart and even uh, articles which which uh, are not well as secondary sources but articles go often much in detail about one aspect and can be very interesting so i just continue because this book we can talk about that f for weeks i think here he writes about mendelssohn 15 year old mendelssohn this is a family the like of which I have never known. There is 15-year-old Felix. What a unique appearance indeed. What are all the other child prodigies compared to him? Merely child prodigies, nothing more. Whereas this Felix Mendelssohn is already a mature artist and he is still only 15. This relationship between Moschlis and Mendelssohn will last. Moschlis will go to, to London in the early 20s, become co-director of the Philharmonic Orchestra where he will uh, uh, perform the, the premiere of the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven. Beethoven, from his deathbed, writes a letter with his famous metronome marks um, and asking for money, and Beethoven organizes a benefit concert for Beethoven. A few weeks or days after, Beethoven uh, will be dead, and uh, M Mendelssohn visits uh, Moschlis often in London. They played with Irar, and, and, at, at, his, at the company of Irar and so on and when uh, Mendelssohn um, starts the conservatory in Leipzig he invites Moschlis to be the piano teacher and Moschlis leaves London for Leipzig on the request of his friend Mendelssohn would die soon after and, men, and, and his, his life work been taken over by, by, Mendel, by, by Moschlis so you, you read everything, all details about uh, Mendelssohn's, uh, how they lived uh, there with, with, with in, the, in that family. Uh, Beethoven here, 
letters from Beethoven to 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 Moscheles. Interesting details. Also, within this source, you can you can comp you can start to mix uh, certain things. Beethoven, Moscheles, who was performing Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in in the early in in, in twenty seven. Uh, with the original, original metronome remarks, he writes them down in his diary, which it was very important for him. Later in the 40s, he starts to um, to comment on the new kind of style that, that musicians had, ma mainly based on, on the bravura style, um, uh, where technique and speed and it's it's, it's coming in, 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 in taking over the place of expression. He writes it very clear. He writes about the old technique, old clavier technique, with the with the with the with the wrist close to wrist, to make make speed on the keyboard. And Beethoven writes about that too. We come back to that later, in future episodes. Uh, but he writes exactly that new pianists started to to open their hands for the new styles, and he has much difficulty about with that. He writes about his difficulties that he has with the new style in which also old music, Mozart and Beethoven, was played faster and faster and, and, and slow movement, slower and slower, the extremes. He opposed to that very much. He went back to London to perform in the end, end of the 40s the Ninth Symphony again and the orchestra, he described, refused to play in his tempi because they were too slow, they said. And with the original score of Beethoven, with his original letter in his hand, he had to prove the orchestra to do it in his way. That's so interesting, and it gives so many lines that you can think about, and even uh, continue to draw these lines to today. And we, we will do that later. It's, it, 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 for for this episode, I just wanted to show you this this book of 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 Mendel of Moscheles. Here is such, and that's la last quote, fifty eight. In the second part and an execution and performance of, of Mozart's C major symphony, played impeccably, and yet to my mind the tempi of the first and last movement were too fast. Is it because I am older and my blood is circulating more slowly, or is it that the others are following a new direction where everything is carried to extremes? I don't know. And it's not one quote, quote. It's, it's, and it, it, it comes back several, several times that he states that these tempi were uh, this general uh, general approach of after uh, 1840, 1850, that tempi were taken so much uh, faster. Well, if you see the metronome marks that most of us left, and really hundreds of them, um, they are so fast when you play them literally. But we come back to that later. So it opens your mind, I think, reading a book like this. And um, really, I, I, I do emphasize the, the importance of look if you can buy it second hand. Uh, I do not think that you can buy it new anymore. And if you don't find read this or even or at least excerpts of the of the diary of Moscheles, a very, very famous and important not famous anymore today, but at those days, but important uh, musician. So next time we come back with uh, um, some other things uh, about uh, some other books in this series and we will see how it develops and how we can combine all the, those elements and it can be a nice um, uh, starting point for talking about inter interpretation also and then we can connect uh, this information to instrument to, to, to information or to ideas I have at the keyboard um, that was it for today. I hope you liked it and if you do so please hit the subscribe button and we see each other very soon again. Bye.